Welcome to Lecture 1. In this introductory lecture, I will outline my teaching philosophy for the course and outline my course objectives. We will then discuss fundamental physical quantities used to define physical systems and review calculus concepts used in the course. This lecture will be broken down into three pieces. Two will be handled by these videos, which includes the course organization and key measurements that we will build on to describe physical systems. The third, a calculus review section, will be presented by selected videos from the Khan Academy. I will break down this course into three major sections, thermodynamics, equilibrium, and kinetics. It is interesting to note that the order the material will be presented in is the opposite as in general chemistry. In this course we will start with the foundational concepts and build applications from them. This order is deliberate in the context of my three main goals. The first, illustrate the connection between math and science. I don't want you to always fall into a mindset of finding what is the correct equation to solve a problem. Instead, I want you to approach the material from a more intuitive standpoint where you let the math describe the science. Two, demonstrate when theories are valid and when they fail. Theories are only valid when the assumptions that make them up are true. It is always important to know when these assumptions are no longer valid so that you know when the model no longer applies. 3. Push you to think of physical systems in the context of the foundational concepts and their applications. In this course, we will develop ideas that will then be used on contrived examples in order to illustrate their properties. However, I want you to start looking at the world around you using the concepts used in this course in order to appreciate how far reaching these principles are. I have several points regarding how the course will be organized that I want to share which will help orient you as to my expectations for the course. 1. This class will employ a flipped model and use active learning during class. Prior to every class, it is expected that you watch the provided preparation material and complete the preparation assignment. You will have an unlimited number of attempts to successfully complete the assignment. The purpose of these assignments is for you to practice some of the knowledge presented in the preparation lecture in a context where it's all right to make mistakes. Then, during class, you will work in groups to complete activities together. The collaborative environment will help you crystallize key course concepts. Keep in mind that you will get out of this process what you put in, so full participation will lead to higher achievement. Two, on every evaluation, quiz, midterm, final, etc., demonstrate your knowledge. I give part marks based on how you work to solve problems. So small mistakes at the beginning of a long solution will be given almost full credit if the rest is performed correctly. This means always attempt each problem as fully as you can so that I can justifiably reward what you know. 3. During the semester you are allowed to have a bad day. In recognition of this I will drop some combination of your worst quizzes and midterms. See the syllabus for more details. 4. If you have any questions or think I evaluated you unfairly, please ask. All solutions will be posted, so check all your work. If there are any issues, please contact me so that we can fix them. 5. All grades will be posted to the titanium. Given that I'm dropping some of your poorest evaluations, I will not be scaling any grades. What you see on titanium at the end of the semester will be your final grade. 6. This is not a calculus course, so we will not do math for math's sake. The math is used to describe the science, and it's the relationship between the two which will be emphasized. Additionally, you've all completed single variable, differential, and integral calculus, and will be expected to draw from that toolbox to solve problems. In addition to this, I do encourage you to sign up for a free account at Wolfram Alpha. Details on how are posted to the course webpage. There will be problems in both the preparation exercises and activities that will require math techniques outside the scope of this course that can easily be solved there. It can also provide a training tool for simpler problems. Keep in mind that on all in-class evaluations, you will be required to solve everything by hand with only a scientific calculator, and problems will of course be created with this in mind. 7. The discussion board on Titanium will serve as the main location to discuss course content related questions. If you email me these types of questions, I will simply direct you to post them there so I can answer them. This is so that everyone can benefit from our individual conversations. This outlines my teaching philosophy for the course. Please read the syllabus for more specifics regarding evaluations, schedule, and expectations. Now, we will turn to fundamental measured quantities 
that will be used as a starting point to describe thermodynamic quantities. The first is force, which is a directed push used to accelerate a body. What is shown on the slide is Newton's second law, the sum of the forces are equal to the mass times the acceleration, and a typical free body diagram on a block on a ramp. We will not be solving these types of problems, but it illustrates some of the forces that act on everything in our macroscopic world. Work, however, is something that we will be spending some time on. It is defined as the energy used to apply a force to an object over a distance. Its units are in newton meters or joules. As one example, Suppose you wanted to lift a 1 kilogram box 1 meter. The work that is done is equal to the force necessary to lift the box, being 1 kilogram times the acceleration due to gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared, and that is multiplied by the distance traveled, 1 meter. Therefore, the work done to the box is 9.81 joules. Now, the energy of an object is its capacity to do work. In other words, work is a change in energy. There are two types of energy kinetic or potential. Just like their names suggest, kinetic energy is the energy in a body due to its motion, while potential energy is the energy of a body as a result of its position and forces acting on it. For example, the box in our previous example gained 9.81 joules of potential energy because it was raised one meter. That means that it has one meter to fall while being pulled by gravity. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be changed from one form to another. By doing work to a system is one way to convert energy from one form to another. Pressure is a measure of a force exerted over a defined area. There are two ways to increase the pressure, being increase the force, or decrease the area that the force is applied over. This idea is important in many places, and the conceptual example below illustrates one instance. If you find yourself on thin ice, what is the best way to avoid falling in? It would be to reduce the pressure of your weight on any one spot of the ice to avoid damaging it. When you're standing, the area that your weight acts over is that of your feet. If you lie down, the area goes up, since the force is now distributed over your entire body. Therefore, the pressure you exert goes down. Pressure can be measured in many different units. In SI, the units are pascals, which is defined as a newton per meter squared. Another common unit for pressure is the atmosphere. When performing calculations with pressure, be careful that you are aware and consistent with your units to avoid making unnecessary mistakes. The work performed by a system can be determined from a variety of inputs. For example, we will soon use the fact that pressure times a change in volume determines the transfer of energy, or work, of an expansion or compression of a gas. This relationship is seen by doing the unit analysis presented on the right. Pressure is in newtons per meter squared and volume is in meters cubed. We can divide out the meter squared and be left with newtons per meter, or joules. As a physical picture of this is depicted in the figure on the left, the y-axis is pressure and the x-axis is volume. The pressure remains constant as the volume expands from some initial volume to a final one. One could imagine that as the volume expands, it pushes a weight, which is how one might capture the work performed by the expansion. The final quantities related to energy that will be introduced is heat and temperature. Like work, heat is also a transfer of energy. However, heat relies on the chaotic motion of particles as its conveyance of energy. The temperature of an object is a quantity that determines the direction of the transfer of energy due to heat. So if a block at 0 degrees Celsius were to be put in contact with an identical block at 100 degrees Celsius, the difference in temperature indicates that the energy is transferred as heat from the 100 degree Celsius block to the 0 degree Celsius block. We will almost exclusively use the Kelvin temperature scale, which is defined as the temperature in Celsius plus 273.15. So the normal body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius converted to Kelvin is 310.15 degrees Kelvin.